Hi everyone, Terry Welbrock here of the Healing Place podcast and excited to share the happy news that another audiobook has been released and this one is actually the first of two books um, in a series and I just literally 20 seconds ago hung up with the author. So we had such a great conversation. She's going to come on to the podcast and talk about the inspiration behind both of these books. The name of the first book is The Best Bedtime Stories for Stressed Out Adults, Relaxing Tales and Guided Meditations to Relieve Anxiety and Depression, Promote Deep Sleep, Healing, and Mindfulness. And then the second one, um, Volume 2, will be out with more stories and Uh, more meditations in the next few weeks. So this first book, oh my gosh, it's so amazing. I just feel incredibly blessed to be a part of uh, the creative process of putting this audio book out into the world. Um, It has stories, and I'll let um, the author talk about the stories that uh, and what the inspiration was behind them. So I won't talk about them myself right now. And then the stories are followed by guided meditations. Uh, But her vision for the books was to have soft, relaxing, soothing, almost meditative music in the background. And so to be able to work with her um, in deciding what music goes in uh, behind each of the meditations. The meditations have different music than the narrations. So there's a sample If you go to um, Amazon, you can type in Terry Wellbrock, T-E-R-I-W-E-L-L-B-R-O-C-K, and it'll pull up all of my audio books, but you'll find it there. And then you can listen to the sample if you click on the audio book link. And yeah, you can hear it for yourself and then click purchase. Um, If you have Audible, You can use a credit or you can purchase the book outright. You can also go to my website, terrywellbrock.com. While you're there, you can sign up for my monthly Hope for Healing newsletter. But go to the books and blogs page, books and blog page, uh, and that has links as well um, to purchase and listen to the samples of the audiobooks that I have out there. But yeah, go check this out. Very exciting news. I will like, keep you posted about when the second book is released, hopefully in the next uh, next couple of weeks. All right, now for today's beautiful episode. Thanks. Welcome everybody to the Healing Place podcast. I'm your host, Terry Welbrock, and very happy to have with me today, Suzanne Anderson, and she is psychologist, author, and coach, and th- that much more. So welcome, Suzanne. Thank you, Terry. Great to be here with you. Yes, absolutely. Well, I know we're we're here to talk about one your book uh, or books. Uh, <laughs> so, but you have you have a a newer book that came out, a second book that has come out, correct? About a month ago. Yeah. Oh wow, that's so awesome! Congrats. Thank you. Yeah. So, what is the title of of that book? That the new book is "You Make Your Path by Walking: A Transformational Field Guide Through Trauma and Loss." Yeah. Do you want to start with that one and and talk about um, how the book has come to be? Sure. Maybe there's a, the two do go together in in a a natural way in that. um, I had been doing research for many years in my women's leadership programs around a path, a developmental path. That's my focused developmental psychology, how to help women really develop to the next level of our potential if we look at it in terms of being inside a masculine model of wholeness for over 5,000 years, you know, what does it look to really use and embody all of our feminine and masculine strengths? So I'd been doing that work uh, over 10 years with hundreds of women in our programs, and we'd figured some things out, basically a pathway for unlocking this next level of capacity that I came to call mysterial, is a word that actually I made up, which we can go into another time. I love that. It's it's your website, right? It is Mysterial Woman. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, that, and I wrote it with my co-author, Dr. Susan Cannon. We were, manuscript was complete. That was the end of 2012. 
getting ready to bring it into the world. And on January 3rd, 2013, I came home to find my husband dead and um, dead by suicide. So that was just to, to that sort of connects us for, to the first book, which is the way of the mysterious woman upgrading how you live, love and lead. You know, the idea that I'm going to come into the world and, you know, take flight and bring um, all that we've learned to to many, many people around the globe. And in fact, what happened was more like an invitation from life that said, yeah, well, maybe not so fast. Let's just see if you can really live, fully live um, in an embodied way, everything that you teach and that you know. Um, and it was a very, very much the opposite of that in terms of, of the descent that I I was called to, we could say. So um, I certainly didn't intend to to write a book when I when this occurred. I actually was simply living day by day and living in a very intentional way through just the most difficult circumstances that I could ever have imagined. And over time, um, like maybe five years after, well, actually, that five years after David died, I started to to be ready to write for myself, to sort of write my self back together. Um, I'd already two years after David died, I'd taken David's my husband. I I I had been able to return to the book, and we got it published in 2016. Um, it did very well, has won numerous three different awards, and. It was out in the world, but I was just ready to write for me, you know, just write to let myself, the me of then, walk with the me that walked through the, the incredible trauma of that first year, especially. Um, and then after I completed that, I I, I uh, showed it to my editor from the first book, and she, I'd written, you know, gone taken myself away for a week at a time, and just really dived in. And um, she said, this could really be helpful to others. You should consider making this a book. So there we have it. And that, so then it took me a few years to get around, you know, to write it, to actually form it into a book. And, uh, and now, and it is an enormous release for me, actually. <laughs> that it, it came out on June 13th and does feel like a certain kind of completion of a very, very difficult cycle. Oh, beautiful. Well, I, my heart hugs yours for your loss, but but taking that and gifting it to others is just uh, just beautiful. I know I told you before I hit record, I've been writing my memoir for 10 years <laughs> and I always felt like it was my mom, um, like I was waiting around. My mom died on my birthday this year um, in, on March 14th. And so I keep now receiving the message, right Right, right. And she had given me her stamp of approval on it because I said, Mom, it's going to be our it's going to be our ugly truth, but also mm -hmm. our journal journey into forgiveness and our beautiful blossoming relationship after we did a lot of work. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it's it's it is very cathartic to be able to write and release or part of what the writing does is and, and there's a sort of, you know, there are different ways of working through trauma. And obviously, you know, a lot of them because of what you, you know, you talk about here on this program, but you, there is the talking about it. There's the, the, you know, working with a therapist, there's in connection. So it's not just talking, it's actually talking in a resonant field. So you could say that. Um, and then there is the being able to write. It gives you the sort of the language for something that's, not quite languaged yet and the languaging of it um can be hard but can also be healing because you see it's out here it's this side out here there's also the then there's a somatic work that you can do and that certainly i did um that's sort of what vessel van der Kolk calls the the bottom up approach to to trauma healing but i think they all have their place and i i i was not ready to revisit my own trauma until I was like revisit it in terms of the writing me first person writing 
And I think that's really important. Um, and we know that now in psychology. I mean, initially we used to always, you know, there's been such a enormous amount of research done in the trauma field in these last, this last decade, especially actually. Uh, but prior to that, we would sometimes direct people too soon back to the trauma, you know, in that sort of exposure therapy way. And we know now it's actually uh, better for the nervous system if we can, you know, let that happen organically. And and for me, it took five years. Now, someone else, it might take a year. It might take two years. I don't know. And for yeah, you, yeah. however many years this is, many years, it sounds like. Yes. Oh, for sure. For sure. So now as a coach, do you do you guide people in, in a writing way? Do you guide people like allow them to use different modalities to to heal their trauma? Well, the work that that I do is with women and and it is working, I would call it trauma informed um, leadership development. So we're working with the younger parts that fired and wired together to get love, safety and belonging in the ways that they did what some call them the adaptive child like the wise child that knows okay to get love here i gotta put this strong part of me this voice maybe my voice in the shadows in the background and uh, that was a wise move because you did need to get love safety and belonging but that doesn't necessarily serve you as you're going on in life and at a certain point you don't have your full expression and so the work that that i do um is very targeted work around specific developmental um i want to call them access points from childhood up through elderhood that are aligned around a feminine or a masculine archetype we call this the the a, a developmental sequence the mysterial sequence and uh, so that's the work I do in general. This new book that just come out um, will have me working now probably more specifically or as well with people who have gone through very specific trauma that's a, maybe event-based trauma um, such as mine. So that will be, that has, I have multitudes of approaches, <laughs> but the whole the essence of my work is, and, and of my own, how I guided myself over that, the charred landscape of loss, as I've called it often, um, is that what this is what is now. It's like, you know, the ability to come into the now, the ability to be present when you've gone through something really traumatic and be able to, you make your path by walking is the title of that second book. So it, that is to say, we are a movement and we need to move. Um, that's just our natural being. And it how we move determines where we end up. As opposed to, I just have to survive this thing, this horrible thing I've gone through, and get back to some life. It is actually, this has, something has cracked me open in a way I hope never to have again, or that I certainly don't want for anyone else. And in that cracking open, can I reveal, can it reveal? And in my case, I would say absolutely more of myself. And then I have access. I, I'm meeting parts of myself. I'm shedding the parts of me, the, the false self in different ways that, um, that had been cultivated over years. So yeah, that's the, I would say that's the movement for me is, and and I, I will see whether I, you know, we're running a new program in October that will, that be connected to this new book. So we'll see. Um, you know, I have a, I had a visual as you, as you sat here and talked and, um, and just to, to clarify, I guess, of, of someone walking down this path, right? And I have, I have someone in my life that is is stuck in a trauma and just has plopped down on their path and right. is but is almost refusing to get back up and walk again and so they're stuck in this stagnation um and so really being able to just even stand up and take that one step down the path is huge right 
And, and in fact, it only is the one step and it is huge. And you know what I would say, and and I have said to, to those that I've worked with where, where, you know, it's almost like to use your metaphor, it would be to come up beside them where they're plopped down on the path and to sit down with them and, and, and say, I know what this feels like, you know, what it feels like to be here, to be right here. And it feels like you can't go anywhere. And so tell me about it. So, okay, then uh, uh, have them be there, be really there, really present there with what is. And then there's the possibility once you bring yourself into the moment, like everything feels so heavy and hopeless and I, I can't move or whatever it is that might be said, let that be congruent for them. Like, don't, don't fight that. But then the, the invitation is, so what is the one next step you could take? What is the one next step you could say? And for myself, I had a, a requirement, which was every morning I wanted and required myself to sit up on the side of my bed and put my feet on the ground and say a little blessing. You know, Suzanne, I'm so grateful to have this embodied life. You know, David had had left this world, my beloved partner. Um, but I didn't. I ch I'm here, and can I? Can my presence in the stay be be a blessing? I most of the time in the early days didn't feel that, but I required myself to do it because you just want to stay stuck. You just want to stay under the blanket. Yeah. But the moment my energy would move, and I'd say that blessing of gratitude for the life I did have, uh, I'm up, and now. Okay, maybe I'll have a shower. So then, you know, that's the movement. So it's really so small. And very often part of the stuckness comes from a feeling of, well, you first of all, you your past is gone. If it's if you've gone through something like I did, you, you it's I I within six months I'd lost my home, had lost my community, had lost my, you know, everything was erased from my life the way I knew it. And all my plans for the future were gone. You know, you cannot, the, the plans you had, that, that map out in front of you, gone. So it can feel overwhelming because you feel as though either you have to, you're stuck going back, like what was that I've left and I can't have and I want, or it's so vastly empty out front. Where do I go? You know, out ahead, I can't go anywhere. So if you can bring it really small, really close in to that one cup of tea you make for yourself um that already is a movement that already is a the energy starts to flow i'm so glad you clarified that because this person is doing little tiny itty bitty things and so now i'm like oh those are steps they right. it is something yeah yeah and, and and everybody what can happen it can be slow slow quick what I've observed in other words especially if they've got someone who can come with them you know meet them where they are rather than where they think they should be as I was saying that was the first step it's like let's let's let me sit here with you in this maybe what I think is stuck energy let me sit here with you um I remember somebody along the way early on who who really was able to sit with me around how the enormous devastation of what I'd lost, and like really who knew David well, who knew us well. Who, and there was something very comforting about that. Like, don't try to make me feel better. Right. I, I, I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. And I appreciate that you can sit with me where I am on the path, which is, this was an enormous loss. Now, I was committed from the very beginning not to do what I would call a spiritual bypass with this process. Um, I have a very long, decades-long spiritual path. My husband did as well. Um, I actually think that the way he went through it was somewhat of a spiritual bypass. He was not afraid of dying. He was suffering from a terrible tinnitus ringing in the head. Um, 
and he was about to lose his business. So, you know, there was, there was a collision of all of these forces. And I think he, he was, he just didn't, I know he didn't have the strength to, to carry on and be in the dissolution of his world the way he knew it. So right. I was really committed to do that walk. I knew for me, I needed to do that walk because when he, he took that path, it changed my life entirely the path that I was on. So I was going to be where I was um, without the bypass, which meant being with my emotions, with my embodied experience. Yeah. Yeah. You brought up the spiritual aspect of it. Did it, did that have a profound impact or did it, did you stay on, on your, your spiritual path? I'd say my spiritual path was super helpful in that I, um, had a very I had a number of things I had a number of practices in my life that I would say were helpful around meditation and just um, presence but I also knew that I was part of a friendly universe a much larger pattern we could say of of interconnected interbeing however one wants to describe that whatever the the context is for another for, for, for your spiritual belief. I have, I have and had that deep sense of that. So that was an enormous uh, anchor for me, a kind of faith in the unfolding of life and also my own commitment to allow this, this event to awaken my consciousness, to give me, as I said before, more access to to more of myself, but also more of the world. There was a way in which I broke open to myself, but also to the world. And I wouldn't even have said the work I do is deeply compassionate. It's you know always been like that way. I would say I've always had a very deep sense of um, connection with the world, but something was blocking, like almost, I've talked about it sometimes like a plexiglass protection between me and the world and all of a sudden that was broken and i the world poured into me i would say i poured into the into the world in a way so there was a deepening of my my waking down let's say if you think of waking up as a spiritual path or the waking down that bringing that my full self into my embodiment beautiful yeah well, well, I went to grab my glasses and they weren't there. <laughs> In case you wonder, I look like a monkey scratching my head for a second. <laughs> I want to check. Wow, I could sit here and talk to you for so long because we've been, gosh, at it for like 25 minutes. So I certainly wanted to give you an opportunity to touch upon anything that we haven't had an opportunity to talk about yet. Hmm. Well, I, I think... Yeah, if I think if I if maybe we just I, I agree the time has flown by. So it's kind of I know, <laughs> but um, I'd say the, the the if there were three things and I and I could sort of coalesce. This is my my beautiful book. I, I will show you show you yeah. that that is out and it does feel really potent to, to hold in my hands. And in um, in Joseph Campbell's work, you may know the mythologist who talks about the hero's journey. Yes. the heroine's journey yeah and and there are three um sections to it, it broadly one is the descent when you're pulled down by some event or it could be an inner process that just says okay we're gonna do some investigating but you leave your ordinary world they call that the descent and then there's the second phase is the initiation where you slay the dragon or you you know, you find the treasure. That's where most of the journey takes place. That was really for me many, many years of um, working my walking this the path, and certainly until I was ready to write about it. And then there is the third stage, which is really key, which is the return, where you come back to the upper world, but you come back obviously as a transformed being, and you come into the world and you say, "Wow." Well, the bringing of this book is, as I said at the very beginning, into the world. 
um, is a kind of potent return for me of uh, almost like there was something, you know, having the experience, writing about it, and now the vulnerability of sharing it. And I've been a teacher for many years in the transformational space, and I haven't really shared a lot of my own personal stories. It's not been my teaching approach, let's say. Um, the first book, I have many case studies of many of the women who went through our work, but I wasn't ready to write, certainly not ready yet to write about my own story. So there's quite a, there's a sort of vulnerable opening, you know, of my kimono, <laughs> you could say, to the world. And, um, and, and knowing where you are in the map is really important. So right now for me, I'm in a kind of return. Um, but there was a phase, and I have the book is, is laid out like that in these three sections. And so I just say to those listening, you know, knowing where you are, and, I, and my hope is that this is a bit of a roadmap for, for you to say, maybe you're in the descent, maybe you've just gotten grabbed and you're being taken down. Like, how can you surrender 2% more to where life has just called you as a kind of, let's say, holy invitation? And then if you're in the initiation and you're just in the hard slog of it, how can you surrender to that's where you are right now? And you will know when you need to return. Now that's where that being stuck is really important because you, you need to watch for that. And then you could be, if you're in the return to really celebrate that phase, that, that pearl of great price. And I would just offer that. I love it. And I, and I so have been living it these past couple of years. I got very, 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 very sick um, from mycotoxin poisoning, exposed to mold uh, in this home, this, this oh. beautiful home. Um, yeah. The, the house had been condemned for toxic mold and then they rehabbed it and um, it looked beautiful. So we bought this beautifully rehabbed home, not knowing that lurking in the vents and under the floors and behind the walls was this horror. And, and so I was the canary in the coal mine because of my trauma history. My body had, i would always lived in this state of um, hyper arousal. And so my adrenals and my immune system, everything had been just, it was worn out. And, um, when, and so it just it hit me and so it, it did it did it just so as you were talking I so just was feeling myself I remember the fall and my life changing from everything I had ever known um and yeah. and then just the slaying of the dragon it, it was a two-year process of slaying but yeah and then and then the coming forth and sharing and um and now yeah. One thing you might want to consider, when, what I go into in the book um, are a number of rituals that I used. I use ritual a lot because trauma gets stored in the right brain. The left brain kind of clicks off. So ritual, which was extremely important for me, and I, I shared a lot of the rituals that I did. I know that I teach the language of ritual in the, in the work that I do with women. Um, that was super important to speak to the two thirds of myself of the, in the iceberg model of consciousness, you know, that the parts of you that are under the surface of the water that are actually directing the flow of the iceberg. But you might want to consider if you feel you're in the return, or maybe you've already done this, that you would do a kind of ritual to let your whole body know we're actually through that now we're, we're, we're done that now bring you know it's a way of gathering yourself up oh for sure i need to do that oh my gosh i'm so excited to dive into that part of the book well the whole book but <laughs> yeah well i could just sit and talk to you for hours i love your depth uh, you're just um you just have such a way with words and um yes and painting the picture that uh, i know i certainly could follow along and um and just feel myself present in the moment so thank you for that Thank you, Terry. Yeah. All right. So how how do people get a hold of the book and how do they connect with you? My website, Mysterial Woman, M-Y-S-T-E-R-I-A-L, woman.com, uh, is the base camp, basically, for all the work that we're doing. Both books are there. And one thing I'll also say about um, the, the new book page, the You Make Your Path by Walking, I also created 
uh, a poetry resource because poetry was extremely powerful for me to work with during because it it poetry has this way of communicating left and right brain um and holding the unspeakable uh and so the poems that really were helpful for me in the descent phase the poems that were really helpful in the initiation and in the return so i just mentioned that for people going through process that uh that that's a resource on website and then yeah sign up on you can join our our mysterial murmuration if you resonate with what's what we call it that wonderful birds Love all it. talking together um, I mean, we are in a very uh, interesting time on the planet, and I feel the work that I do it happens to be with women in these last uh, 15 years, but we're, we're all at an evolutionary tipping point. That's just where we are right now, and there's some of us on the frothy edge of that, and it's not easy. And when you can recognize that you are in the midst of a transformation, a mutation, actually, mm -hmm. for the sake of a larger awakening, um, then it's it's it is easier. That's the murmuration that you're not alone. You do have to do your own work, but you're part of a, but a much larger movement. It really helps it helps you. So yeah, join the uh, our mailing list and stay connected. And in the in October, I'm going to launch a new program um, that will be an introductory program for this book you make your path by walking like a 10 week but my deeper programs are are 15 months for women and the next one starts in 2024 but once you're on the mailing list um you can find out more about all that wonderful all right well thank you again for for being here for the beautiful work you do and shining your light of hope in the world thank you terry and you and you and your light Awesome. Thank you. All right. Well, everyone, thanks for joining us today on the Healing Place podcast. And remember, until next time, be gentle with yourself. Thanks. Bye-bye. Hey, everybody. Terry Welbrock again. Just wanted to thank you for listening to the episode today and remind you to visit my website as well, terrywellbrock.com. You can sign up for my monthly Hope for Healing newsletter, which is also jam-packed with information and strategies and blog pieces and guest blog pieces and links to shows. Thanks for, again, being here and being a part of this healing space. I very much appreciate you. All right. Bye-bye.